hello 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 grade 12 so welcome to today's lesson we will be studying subtropical anti-cyclones and from the title you can already tell what's going on so firstly sub meaning below the tropics below the tropics okay so that's gives us an, an idea of where they occur and we just learned about tropical cyclones right so if the they're called anti-cyclones or anti-cyclones it means in some way or another they are opposites of what tropical cyclones are but let's see if this prediction is correct and let's get into the lesson so this is everything that you need to know for your exam um, I will not go over it because I know you guys can read, but yes, that's what you need to know. And let's get into the lesson without wasting any more time. Okay, so I'm sure you're already familiar with this diagram, but I've added it here so that you can see where subtropical, sub, yeah, subtropical anticyclones occur. Sorry, I got distracted there for a moment. But essentially, they are caused by descending air from the equator and the mid-latitudes. And they, are, they occur 30 degrees both north and south of the equator. So they will occur somewhere here, which is 30 degrees south and yes. So some of you are probably asking yourselves okay so <laughs> what does this have to do with me why should i care well we need to care about subtropical anti-cyclones because of the location of south africa so south africa is located right here um and it is affected mainly the southern parts of south africa are well all of the south africa but yes affected by the subtropical anticyclones because of their location so what are the characteristics so what you need to know which is the most important is that it's a high pressure cell remember with tropical cyclones it was a low pressure cell but subtropical anti-cyclones are high pressure cells so remember i said it's going to be opposite of the tropical cyclones so it's a high pressure i mean it consists of a high pressure cell and if you remember from previous grades okay the point that i thought was coming is <laughs> not it but essentially what i wanted to say is that high pressure cell has descending air but maybe that point is still coming but anyways um it also it's diverging air the air diverges at the center which is also opposite of tropical cyclones but yes the wind blows in an anti-clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere and of course in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere but we focus on the southern hemisphere Another characteristic is that it is dry. Okay, I've already mentioned that it's descending air, but it's dry descending air, which causes a stable atmospheric condition, meaning unlike tropical cyclones, which caused thunderstorms and the likes, this causes stable atmospheric conditions such as normal sunny day, you know, yeah. So that's as a result of the high pressure cell okay i've already <laughs> mentioned that and also another thing that you need to know is that this dry air heats up adiabatically which means that as the air uh, descends it heats up so yeah that's what it means okay so why Okay, I've already mentioned this point when we started. Why are they significant? Why should we care about them? Because they affect South Africa due to their location at 30 degrees south of the equator. 
so on the diagram there you see the three high pressure cells which are the south atlantic high pressure cell the kalahari high pressure cell and the south indian high pressure cell okay to help you remember these two are named after the ocean that they occur on so this side is the indian ocean hence why it's the south indian o indian high pressure cell and this one is on the atlantic ocean which is why it's the south atlantic high pressure cell okay so they are responsible for the semi-arid conditions of the south africa remember previously when we were going over the characteristics we mentioned that they result in stable um atmospheric conditions and yeah especially the kalahari high pressure cell it plays a big role in the semi-arid conditions over south africa because of the ITCZ, which stands for Intertropical Convergence Zone, in winter, it shifts northwards. Hence, why we see the impacts more in winter. Because in winter, they are directly over South Africa in comparison to summer, where they occur south of South Africa. Okay, so one that you need to know, like you know your name, is the Kalahari High Pressure Cell because it has the biggest influence over South Africa's climate. Okay, let's get into the effects of the Kalahari High Pressure Cell on winter and summer climate in South Africa and basically the associated weather patterns. So first things first, we'll start off with summer, which is sketch B, right? And then you can see that the inversion layer occurs above the plateau, above the interior uh, of South Africa. That allows the warm, moist air from the Indian Ocean to be able to reach the interior of South Africa, hence why we experience summer rainfall so yeah i hope that makes sense and then with winter it's a different case so firstly because the kalahari high pressure cell is dominant in winter because of the shift of the itcz there is you know cool dry conditions and then also another thing about a high pressure cell a characteristic is dry air that descends, right? So the and as it descends, it heats up adiabatically. So the air that is in the lower parts will be warmer than the air above, which then causes an inversion layer below the escarpment, which therefore the warm moist air from the Indian Ocean cannot reach the interior of south africa which is why there isn't a lot of yeah there isn't winter rainfall it's dry conditions because the warm moist air does not reach the interior parts of south africa so yeah i hope that makes sense let's move on okay so these are just the associated weather conditions that you need to know for the exams you guys know how to read. I don't have to <laughs> read it because, I mean, I have essentially explained most of them. But then one thing that I will add is that there's an occurrence of berg wind in winter. So that's just something else that I will not cover in this video. But you can indicate in the comments if you would like me to cover that. But that's just something else that also occurs. Whereas in summer, there's also something called the moisture fronts and line thunderstorms. You can also just indicate if you want me to explain that in the comments. You will be examined about them. Like Okay, so let's get on to the questions. First question says, does sketch X or Y indicate a summer condition? Just explain this. So you will obviously look at the location of the inversion layer and we can see that on x the inversion layer is above the plateau 
So obviously that is a, a summer condition. The precious soul A. So the precious soul A. When I was explaining, I kept on mentioning uh warm, moist air from the uh, ocean. So if you know that ocean, you will know that precious soul. So it's basically the South Indian high precious soul. Okay. Name the ocean over which Precious Sal A is located. Okay, that explains itself, the Indian Ocean. Name Precious Sal C. Ooh. What is Precious Sal C? What is it, guys? It is, okay, clue. It is occurring on the plateau over the interior of South Africa. What is it? It's the Kalahari High Precious Sal. Is the precious soil associated with rising or subsiding air? Okay, another word for subsiding would be descending. Yeah, but it is associated with subsiding air because it is a high precious soil, and a characteristic of high of high precious soils is subsiding air. Question six: Will clear and stable conditions occur in sketch X or sketch Y? Hmm, where will they occur? <laughs> in sketch Y, because sketch Y, basically because of, we've established that Y is winter, and we know that clear and stable conditions occur in winter, so the answer is Y. Question 7, does a strong or weak subsidence give rise to the position of the O? Oh. <laughs> Does a strong or weak subsidence give rise to the position of the inversion layer in sketch Y? It is obviously a strong subsidence. Hence, that inversion layer is present. These questions were very easy, very introductory. Um, nothing too hectic. Just testing basic knowledge. Not a lot of critical thinking involved. Just straightforward questions that you can look forward to in an exam okay the next questions you need to name answers like cones a b and c and i made a mistake and i already included the names but let's just go over them it's the south atlantic high pressure style b would have been the kalahari high pressure style and c would have been the south indian high pressure style Second question requires you to draw a sketch to illustrate the influence of the interior anticyclone, which is the Kalahari High Pressure Cell, on South Africa's weather. So, basically, um, the sketch that I had shown previously, where it was the winter and the summer sketch, think of a sketch like that. Just redraw something like that and yeah so you'll get marks on your labels that is the most important part in fact more important than the drawing or the sketch itself so be sure to label as you can see here okay the next question requires us to write a paragraph explaining the influence of the ITCZ on the changing positions of the anticyclones. So this does seem like a daunting question at first, but the biggest, I think the main theme has to be on the movement of the ITCZ. So basically you need to, you say that the ITCZ shifts north and south of the equator from season to season where in winter it will shift northwards and in summer it will shift south southwards and the pressure belts follow the migration of the sun that's another point and then in summer because of this shift the anticyclones occur in the most southwards position in South Africa uh, because the ITCZ has shifted south of the equator. So therefore, the anticyclones will also be located for the south. And the opposite is true for winter is that they are located for the north. So that is 
basically the main theme of the changing positions in relation to the ITCZ. It is a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope it helped. And my apologies for the different sounds. So I recorded this over two days in different locations. Hence why the sound is different. Because, yeah, anyways. But thank you for tuning in and see you on the next video.